Good morning homesteaders, YouTube viewers and people who want to renovate. Uh, this is the last video of me doing this little piece between the two windows in the soon to be studio. Um, the first video I scratched off all the paint, uh, the dry paint wallpaper. The second video I um, covered it with a gap sealer. And in this video, I'm going to paint it, and it will be done. I'll give it two coats, but I'll only film me painting one coat, because I'm sure it's pretty boring to watch someone paint a wall. But in the meantime, I'm going to talk to you about the number one reason, the number one reason, that my wife and I decided to move to Ireland. Hard to do with one hand. This paint we actually found uh, in the house. So when we moved in, they obviously had done some quick paint work to cover up any imperfections or cracks to make the house look pretty. And luckily we can still use that paint. <laughs> I'm improvising. And this is like a salad tray or something. But anyway, uh, I was using this brush before to paint upstairs. And it was the only sort of bigger brush that I had. So yes, I'm using a cleaning brush as a painting brush. I don't really recommend it. Because they don't really hold paint the same way. You can see it does hold paint. But there's a lot of gaps between the bristles and therefore it's not going to do a very good job and it's probably going to drip a bunch but <laughs> let's see how we go all right do do see it's not too bad just got to make sure it doesn't drip too much luckily i've put down some cardboard and now i can just look at that big brush strokes who wouldn't want to brush with a, <laughs> a yard brew all right so <laughs> Um, when my wife and I were discussing ideas about the future, you know, one of the ideas was, uh, you know, I'd like to live in another country outside Austria. Uh, the truth was I didn't really enjoy learning the language. I did do my first German course and I do have a certificate of level one German, but I certainly don't enjoy the language and don't really like even listening to it <laughs> uh, but I mean I lived in Austria for eight years so I, I picked up a little but uh, certainly not enough to to use in conversation or anything and I spoke English at work as an English teacher and I spoke English at home with my wife uh, so then there was no German practice because my job was in English. Anyway, for a few years, the Austrian government had decided to cut certain types of funding to education programs. And unfortunately, my school, where I worked in Vienna, uh, was one of the recipients of these contracts, which was worth a lot of money. They no longer had government contracts to, to work from, so the workload at the school in Vienna uh, dropped sort of a fair bit, you know, like first it dropped about a quarter, then it dropped about half, and in the end I was not making uh, maybe just under or around 10,000 euros a year which anyone who knows Vienna is less than unemployment benefit. So I said, let's get out of here. Uh, being a teacher is not uh, paying the bills, even though we're in a capital city. Uh, it's time to try something different. So anyway, uh, we decided to try and find a country where people spoke English 
and was in the EU so we could live there legally. Because uh, the important thing about living anywhere is that you want to live there as a legal entity uh, so you can work and you know go to the hospital and use the doctors and whatever. Uh, so speaking English became important, but this happened around the time that, uh, yeah, 2016, when the English wanted to leave the EU. So then all of a sudden the number of countries was very limited. <laughs> By very limited, I mean, there's only one country left in the EU that speaks English, even though the official language of the EU is English. Uh, all right, so Scotland, Ireland, Wales, all these places no longer in the EU. And that means only Ireland is the English-speaking country. So that limits the options. When we looked at Ireland, we had a few options. We uh, wanted to live somewhere beautiful. We didn't really think about getting jobs or working, to be completely honest. I thought I'd just work as a teacher again, but that didn't work out so well. Um, but it ended up being a real cheap place to be. You know, you can buy a house in Ireland for a very reasonable amount of money. You might have to fix it up, like we're doing. But you can also see that that's worth it. This is only the first coat, that's why you can see through it still. All right, this isn't going to be too big a deal. This is going to be fun. Now I've got the little brush for the edges. I usually like to moisten the brush before I use it. So I use the wet, <laughs> sort of watery bit of the paint to get it primed and then put it into the thicker paint. I just find that it sucks up the paint better. All right, I'll do these corners. All right, so economics was a big thing, but it wasn't the only reason. Uh, the other reason was that uh, it got hotter in Austria every year. In Austria, it was over 40 degrees the last two or three, almost four or five summers ago. Uh, every summer seems to get hotter. And in a country that is famous for, like, yodeling and, uh, you know, the Alps and things like that, you wouldn't expect 40 plus degrees in a country in the middle of Europe. You just wouldn't. Mind you, there hasn't been much snowfall for the last, you know, sort of 15, 20 years either. So Europe's getting hotter. Oops. And mainland Europe is actually, you know, it catches on fire in the middle of summer. Uh, farmers lose their crops to fires, even in Austria, where it gets too hot. So I'm trying to film this and talk at the same time. It's kind of difficult. All right, this is the tricky bit. Getting up under there. That's why I need a small brush. Ooh, okay. So anyway, I'm just yapping, just talking about moving in one of the best things about Ireland though is that as long as you can legally be here you can pretty much do whatever you want you can buy property anyone from around the world can buy property in Ireland uh, you know you can live in the US and still own property here which means you can invest in the land where your grandfather came from. You'd be surprised how many people say that they're Irish. Almost everyone you meet. Thing is, I'm not. Not even a little Irish. But my mum did marry an Irish person. So they'll be visiting this summer. Hopefully. We'll see how we go with the virus and the lockdown and all that stuff. Well, that's the first coat done. I'm sorry if I wasn't filming it properly. It's hard to actually paint with one hand and hold a camera in another and focus on anything. But anyway, the important stuff is painting into the cracks and things, sealing up. 
little bits make a solid barrier. All right, there's still my first coat. And when this is dry, later on today, I'm going to come back and repaint it, of course. I'll give it two or three coats, I reckon, just to make it nice and even. The good thing is it'll look really flat, even though this wall isn't flat. You can tell that from a mile away. curved in. That's why there's always shadow on it. But uh, all right, it doesn't look too impressive at the moment. But uh, that center part is going to be uh, repainted to be perfectly the same color as the surrounding area. And that's that one little bit of renovation done. This is going to be the home studio so it's very very important that this room is clean and mold free and not too uh, humid. I'm hoping that uh, I can sort of get this all done in the next couple of weeks. Of course, being locked down does help. Still have to leave the bed in the room. But leaving the bed in the room isn't bad. It makes the room quieter. So I'll put up some more curtains and things. Uh, you can see I've tried to do that here. And put some hooks up. Renovate however you can. But I mean, try to do it properly. What I mean is just consistently and you know do the proper number of coats of paint and things like that there's no point skimping oh yeah, there you go there's the paint there's no point skimping on your home renovation at this point because only you have to look at it every day all right i think i just yapped i don't know what i was talking about but it was the number one reason we moved here was economic reasons it's true the number one reason we moved to ireland was economic reasons the number two reason, but just as important, were um, climate reasons. That the center of Europe gets hotter and hotter every year. I left Australia when it was 42 to 45 degrees every day. 30 degrees every night when I left Brisbane. I went to Europe, uh, saw snow, thought that was all normal. And in the last five years or so, I've seen every summer reaching 40 degrees plus in the middle of Europe so we moved to this nautical area which is out here on the west coast of Ireland keep watching anyway there's a lot of renovations to be done uh, I'll take a picture of that when it's finished and stick it on the end of the video thanks for tuning in my name is John Green uh, this is Green Ideas with uh, a bit of blah 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 while I paint the wall